Here's the spoiler free video review for The Invisible Man. I'm Bleeding Critic. The Invisible Man is another movie that's fallen from the Blumhouse Productions conveyor belt. I just savagely reviewed The Hunt from Blumhouse, so I hope they get it right this time. Over the years, The Invisible Man has never been on my radar. The idea is tired, and has had several coats of creative paint splashed over it, so I really don't care for it to be introduced again. When I watched this Invisible Man trailer, I thought, no point in watching it. As usual, the trailer demonstrated the whole plot. Those that make trailers have no clue about less being more. They have no clue on how to show just enough without plot spoiling. However, there are a few times when bad trailers are seen where the actual movie itself is really good. Elizabeth Moss should have won a TV equivalent to an Oscar for the work she's done in The Handmaid's Tale. She's exceptionally talented, and she is the reason I watched The Invisible Man. Close-up, lingering shots of Elizabeth Moss is constantly used in The Handmaid's Tale. It works to a point, but after so many episodes it gets repetitive. And there's a few of these lingering similar shots of her face in The Invisible Man. It works, but it did feel like familiar ground, only because of The Handmaid's Tale. And you know what, Elizabeth Moss can get away with it because she can express so much without talking. The opening scene's tension is just brilliant. I was surprised. So the film's story continues and I'm engaged, I'm thrilled, I'm into this creepy ride. Every actor is really good of course, but Elizabeth Moss brings emotion, believability and class to the table, but this guy, Aldis Hodge, is fantastic. I only want to see him casting leading roles from now on. His on-screen daughter is on point as well, so congratulations to all the actors. There's scenes where I found myself clapping, because I loved the creativity I was witnessing. This is writer-director Lee Wanell's best work. There's some very clever intriguing camera shots during the violence and when the tension is simmering. I liked the music and I have to tell ya, I never expected this film to be as good as it is. The movie's trailer is for a bad film, not this one. So for the first time I've been thinking on what I'd do if I had the chance to be invisible. The people I'd like to terrify. The power of the Invisible Man is this. For the first time I believe what I saw on screen can be possible. For the first time I wanted to be invisible. For the second time I've seen clever creativity, clever ideas injected into an old boring story. And it works a treat. The first clever creativity was with 2013's version of Evil Dead, though its original was not dull or boring. Now you gotta understand, the achievement that they succeeded with this new movie is huge. If someone suggested to me to do something different with The Invisible Man, I'd immediately reject it. I'd have no interest to revive it. It's dead in the water to me. So this film made me ponder this. With the right creative team in place, anything is possible. The Invisible Man is the movie standard Blumhouse needs to continue with, not trash like The Hunt. The pace of each scene in The Invisible Man is spot on. I'm amazed at how simple and clever it is. Those brutal, unexpected moments I will never forget. Those small details and the slow build of terror and madness is awesome. It's genuinely frightening at times, very creepy, and it includes important issues that made me think about stuff in my real life. Elizabeth Moss's character demands your attention. She has the skill to make me think about what I would do in a similar situation. This film reminded me of an old movie called The Entity. 
and I wondered if this film would have improved if it wasn't about an invisible man, but the spirit of a dead person instead. The fear caused by an invisible enemy is a common horror theme and this time, somehow, it feels special and different. The on-screen atmosphere pulled me into the story and I enjoyed every moment. The Invisible Man is class, it is brilliant, totally unexpected with a cast and direction to die for. My blood turned cold several times. I could taste the stress and feel the urgency. It's an immersive experience that I can't stop thinking about. Lee Wannell, thank you and well done. Now it's time for the trailer for my interactive website. This is William Friedkin. Don't panic. If your screen starts to bleed, you are about to witness I'm the anonymous horror film critic, the creator and narrator of immersive scary stories. Bleedingcritic.com is the interactive horror platform where horror fans have a voice and are actually seen. Horror memories, this is where you talk about that moment from any film that really damaged you. And there's more interaction for you with horror therapy. Share that moment from your real life where something scared or terrified you. I like short horror films, especially ones that don't get the attention they deserve. So if you've made a short horror film, send it to me. I'll even add a special filmed introduction. You can watch the short horror films I've chosen right now. On to my horror content. Scary Stories UK is my YouTube channel, so all my YouTube videos are here as well, and they will freeze your spine. Check out my interviews and photo galleries, and watch my spoiler-free film reviews, and when you see any of the films I've reviewed, you can add your own rating. Follow me across social media, subscribe to my YouTube channel Scary Stories UK follow and interact with me on Twitter at Bleeding Critic and on Instagram. Do a bit of retail therapy with clown merch. There's five designs of my face splattered over 50 different products. And Patreon is a way you can support my interactive horror platform and my YouTube channel from as little as five dollars a month. During the time you've watched this video, I've scuttled along your ear canal into your skull and I ain't leaving.